Hello, my name is Donald Rumsfeld. Or welcome to my interpretive dance class. We're going to be talking about compiling software. I think it's something that new users are often kind of afraid of, and I think they're afraid of it because they don't really know what it is or how to do it or what it means or what it does. So I'm going to run through the basics of how to compile simple software from source because uh, it's a useful thing to do. Uh, sometimes it's a necessary thing to do occasionally, uh, but it's certainly useful. As usual, I'll give a little bit of background because I think that helps to understand these things. I'll be talking about what are a compiles, how be a do of it, and why so it to be. Uh, so we'll start out with the first one. So I've got the GCC man page. GCC is the uh, C compiler that you'll find, find on most Linux distros, C and C++, uh, you're rarely going to be interacting with that directly. So, yeah. But usually with C programs, you're going to be using make. Uh, so first of all, what is what does it mean to compile a program? What is that? So the alternative to compilation is um, interpreting a script. So you've got interpreted interpreted languages and you've got compiled languages. Uh, interpreted languages tend to be a uh, higher level. They're easier to code, they're easier to fiddle with, uh, they're less efficient, uh, and they use more resources. That kind of means the same thing. They're quite slower. Think, you know, compiled languages tend to be quicker, harder to do. Uh, that's kind of changing with languages like Rust, but broadly speaking, interpreted languages, easier but less efficient. Compiled languages, harder, more efficient. So an interpreted language, an example of an interp interpreted language, language is um, Python. So let's make a little Python program, the simplest possible Python program. We're doing like a little classic hello world. We're just saying hello. So in order to run that, we've written a Python program that is a program, but in order to run that program, it needs to be interpreted by the Python interpreter. And the Python interpreter is just another program, the Python program. So we call the Python program and we tell it to run the script that we've just made. And it does so and prints the word hello. So the reason that's kind of inefficient uh, is just because it's, it's high level. It's not running directly on the kernel and the CPU. It's running through an interpreter that's doing a lot of sort of clever stuff to make it easier. And the, the Python interpreter is pretty large. If I were to pretend, pretend I wanted to reinstall it, that is 77 megabytes. So there's a big 77 megabyte program sitting there waiting for Python scripts to run. And yeah, so not, not the most efficient thing in the world. Uh, so that's interpreted languages. Other examples of interpreted languages are like JavaScript, which is often interpreted inside the browser, but also elsewhere. Uh, any shell script, you know, bash scripts, they are interpreted by bash or sh. Uh, they're all interpreted by another program. The alternative to that is compiled uh, programs. So let's do a little, a little C program as an example of that. So first of all, we include a standard input output. So that's included from glibc, which is a, a basic Linux thing. Um, so we make a, a main function, uh, print print f in this case. So again, printing the word hello. We want uh, a new line after that, and then we return an integer because it's an integer function, and then in there, and that's that's the entire C program, right? So if I cat, that that's the entire C program. But there's nothing simplifying a bit, but there's there's nothing on the system that can just run that. There's no interpreter for C. What we have to do with C is take this, compile it to a binary, and then that binary will be run. Uh, essentially, the kernel will tell the CPU to run that binary directly. It's just binary code that runs on the CPU. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but you know, essentially, that's what we're talking about. So if we compile that. So I'm using GCC. I'm compiling the file lol.c, which is the file that we just created, and the output file will be lol. That will be the binary. 
if I ls, you can see lol there. That is a binary file. It's got a little a little star next to it to tell you, at least the way I've got things set up, that that is a binary. We can run it. So if we run lol, it does the exact same thing. It just prints out the word hello. But this is a binary. I can now, you know, I don't need an interpreter to run this. This can run on any compatible Linux system, like any other 64-bit Linux system should be able to run that fine because it's a very simple binary. I could send that to my laptop and run it there. That could be distributed. Uh, Python Python scripts, on the other hand, they can run on anything that's got a Python interpreter. If I, if I write a Python script, you could run that on your phone, you can run that on Windows, you can run that you know anywhere. Whereas this will only run on something with a very similar CPU because it's been compiled specifically for this operating system and this CPU. But it's more efficient. So there's a portability argument to be made both ways, uh, but the efficiency always goes with the with the um, lower level language. So that's that's the essential difference between interpreted and compiled languages. So the kind of things you you generally going to want to compile are small utility programs for the most part. Uh, most people, some people will, but most people aren't going to want to compile like Firefox or Chromium because that would take many, many, many hours for arguable benefit. Uh, there might be some simple GUI applications you want to compile, but broadly speaking, I, I only tend to compile very simple programs and command line stuff. Uh, that includes some of the Suckler stuff for me, like DWM and so on, but um, essentially small command line utilities are good to compile yourself, at least good to start with. Uh, the reasons you might want to compile, uh, one example is the NNN file manager, which for a while had a bug in the repository. The version in the repositories had a bug. So I just um, I just got the version from GitHub and compiled that and started using that. And once I was into the habit, I might as well just uh, carry on doing that. Um, you might want to, and this is the most free software reason to compile something yourself, might you want to change it. You want to change the code, add a feature, make it do something different, make it do something that you want. That's a cool reason to compile yourself. Uh, but broadly speaking, just small things. I'm not going to teach you to compile every program out there. I'm just going to give you the basic, go, get you over the first hurdle, dealing with the simplest example, which is a C program with a make file. Uh, so as an example of that, we will use the NNN file manager, which is a uh, terminal-based file manager, keyboard-centric file manager. So we get this, we copy this URL. We click on this code thing, copy the URL. Uh, go back over here and we git clone that and then change into that directory and what we've downloaded there is a bunch of source code so if we go into the source directory this nnn.c file that is the file that contains the nnn source code this is all the instructions to make the program it's it's about seven and a half thousand lines of code. Uh, we can't run that directly, so obviously we've got to compile it. So if we go up a directory back into the NNN directory, you'll see that we've got a make file. Uh, make is a utility uh, whereby the program, programmer can make a make file, which is essentially like a recipe for how to make and install this program. So they do all the hard work for us, which is fucking cool. If a, pro if a, if a project has a make file, that tends to make your life very easy. So in order to compile this, all I need to do is type the word make and you'll see it compiles and once it's done we're left with an nnnnnnnn binary which i can then run and that's cool that works we compiled that ourselves and this nnn binary works beautifully all good right but that's not installed that is just compiled we're just running it from the local directory in order to install something that's got a make file uh, we just do uh, we need sudo in this case. The reason you need sudo is because you're copying to the root file system. So you need you need root permissions to do that. Uh, so we do sudo sudo uh, make install, and that will install it. And it tells you what it's done. It's copied it to use a local bin. So stuff that you generally speak on most distros, stuff that you install with your package manager will go in user bin or slash bin. Stuff that you install yourself will go and use a local bin to keep it separate. Worth remembering that this stuff isn't package managed. You're installing this stuff manually. This won't be dealt with by your package manager. Um, and you can also see that it's installed the man page. So we can we can now do man nnn. And we can do just nnn because it's now in our path. It's now installed. 
So we can just use that like a regular program. It is a regular program. We just uh, compiled it ourselves. So that's the basics of uh, something with a make file written in C, simple program, very easy to uh, compile. If you're doing a GUI thing or something like that, you might need uh, the project page will probably tell you what you need to build it. In the case of Debian or Ubuntu, you want the dev, uh, the, the dash dev packages uh, for that particular um, or well, for that particular project package. Uh, on Arch, you they're one package. You don't need a dash dev package, but generally it'll, it'll tell you what you need to build it. You just install those things, follow the instructions. And you can compile a thing. This is just to try and get you over the fear of, you know, compiling things yourself. That's a very simple example of compiling a program. Uh, I might as well say while we're here, if you want to uninstall it cleanly, uh, we just do make uninstall, which is all, you know, fairly oh, pseudo, pseudo make uninstall. I mean, it's all all fairly self-explanatory, right? I'm gonna put that back because. I might forget that I've got rid of it. Right, so that's how you compile, install, and uninstall. All super, super simple, super easy. Um, so a more, more, more detailed example of why you want, might want to do that. So uh, the example I'll use is something that I use myself. So this is SXIV, the Simple X Image Viewer. So this bottom bar, by default, this uh, inverts your normal scheme. So I've got a black background. This would be, uh, by default, black text on a white background, which I didn't like. I just wanted this whole window to be black with just white text down here. So, and that wasn't available in the config settings. So I made a patch and compiled that myself with those changes. So super simple. I'll show you the patch. Make that a bit bigger. Okay, so this is my, so whenever I make changes to a program, I make a diff from my changes so that if I ever need to do that again, I can do it very easily. So these are the changes that I made to SXIV in order to get that bar at the bottom to be the colors that I wanted it to be. So essentially all I've gone is, all I've done is gone through anything that applies to the bar, I've switched over the background and foreground color. So it's not in a particularly elegant way of doing it, but it works. I made a few other changes, but they were in, uh, they were in the programs config dot h. So I've changed the sizes of the thumbnails because the default thumbnails were very small and set the uh, the default thumbnail size to the second one rather than the third one. It's all like simple stuff. So if we go to if we go to the SXIV page, I can I can show you the differences between the default one and the one that I've patched myself. So we'll clone uh, this project. We're cloning SXIV. CD into it. Do an LS. See, see if there's a make file. There is a make file. So this is super easy. So if I make that and then run it. So I didn't install it. So I'm just running the binary that I've created. I'll show you. In fact, I'm just running the binary that I've created in the local folder. So I've got my system installed SXIV, that's still there, but I'm just running this version that I've just compiled. This is default straight from the repos version. I'm just running this straight from this uh, directory where I've just compiled it. Uh, I, I need to specify a directory, of course. So, uh, so we're going the same directory. So that's default, let's move this window away. So the one on the left, I'll put the bar on so you can see the difference. The one on the left is my version with the light on dark. And this is the default version straight from the repos with dark on light. That's basically my only change apart from the thumbnail size. I've made my thumbnails a bit bigger than the default ones, which are very small. And also changed the, uh, the size of thumbnails available. Because I mean, that is ludicrously small, for, ludicrously small for me. Uh, and that's about it. So that's that's a reason why you might, might want to uh, uh, compile something yourself to make changes. I think after this, I'll make a, a more detailed video about 
if you want to apply patches to something, how to maintain that in a sane manner. So I'll probably do, I've done a video before about compiling DWM, but I'll probably do another video following on from this about how to compile D, well, DWM as an example and how to, in a sane way, manage all the patches that you're applying if you want to do that. Uh, so this is just, this is just really to say, if you're afraid of compiling stuff, just give it a go. The instructions are pretty much always on the project page. If there's a make file, just type make and it will compile it, type sudo make install and it will install it and then you can use it. It's all very simple and I'll stop babbling there. Thank you very much. I love you all. Goodbye.